Welcome to the MIT Sloan Expert Series, which brings you an inside look at some of the most exciting new ideas and research happening at MIT Sloan. I'm your host, Rebecca Knight. In this special three-part edition, we are looking at the future of the sports industry. In this episode, we're going to be looking at the implications of the COVID-19 health crisis on the fan experience. Joining me is Ben Shields. He is a senior lecturer here at MIT Sloan, a former ESPN executive, and the author of The Sports Strategist and The Elusive Fan. Thanks so much for being here, Ben. Rebecca, it's a pleasure. So it's been several months now that sports has been suspended. The country, the world is gripped by a public health crisis, which has also become an economic one. How is this sports hiatus affecting fans? How are they coping? Well, there's no question that sports fans want their games and their players back. For me though, I think it's fascinating to monitor how fan needs and expectations are changing as a result of this pandemic. And from my perspective, we are seeing the disruption of the fan experience happening at such an accelerated pace. I'll tell you what I mean by that. Digitization is all around the fan experience right now. In our work, school, personal lives, digital experiences are all that we have. And so I think it's an important question to say, how is that trend going to affect the fan experience long-term? So, so you say that, it, that it's coming quicker than you expected, and it's gonna be on sports organizations to respond. What, what do you mean by that? Well, for me, this is really an innovation challenge. And there are a few key opportunities to innovate in the fan experience. Now, to be clear, these innovation opportunities have existed to some degree. Now it's a question of how do they get accelerated in the industry? So the first innovation opportunity that I find interesting is around increased personalization. I think that we see personalization across a wide range of digital services. Amazon provides personalized e-commerce. Facebook provides personalized social networks. When I log into TikTok, my feed is personalized based on the content that I've consumed in the past. So we're moving more toward this personalization culture across a wide range of experiences. Even in fitness, closer to home in the sports world. For Peloton, which has been one of the business winners in the pandemic right now, you can personalize your own fitness training. So the question is, how can we accelerate the personalization of the sports fan experience? One of the challenges here is that the, the sports fan experience is so fragmented. You know, I've got to buy tickets from one provider. I've got to watch games on one provider. I've got to follow all the social media accounts in a, a number of different areas. So what, what I think there's a, an interesting opportunity here is around personalizing the fan experience. So you only have to go to one place. It reduces the friction for the customer experience. Again, this is what's happening in the technology space. You are going to Amazon for your shopping or, or, or whatever the case may be, reducing the time and money that it takes to fulfill your needs. I think that's a really interesting opportunity for the sports world. So talk to me, Ben, about how teams and leagues are drawing viewers in. Yeah, that's, that's such an important point. So one innovation opportunity here is around personalization. The second innovation opportunity, in my view, is around providing access, creating connection between fans and the action that happens on the field, the court, or the course. You know, I think when we look back at this pandemic, one of the defining moments from a sports fan experience will be seeing people like Bill Belichick in, at his kitchen table with his dog during the NFL draft. There was an intimacy there that I think is, is new and interesting and engaging to fans. Even in events like the Match 2, which pitted Tom Brady and Phil Mickelson, versus Tiger Woods and Peyton Manning, all of the athletes were mic'd up. And that ability to hear what they're saying while they're playing was a source of real interest during the broadcast and brought fans in. You could hear the trash talk 
between Tom Brady and Charles Barkley right before Brady walks up and then holds a wedge from the fairway. You could hear Phil Mickelson give inside tips to Tom Brady on how to read greens and putt more effectively. Look, the bottom line here is on access. We get access to players through social media, through their feeds. I mean, I'm sitting there watching LeBron James talk live stream on Instagram while his kids are running around. There's no reason why we shouldn't have that same level of access during the games themselves. Create more access, it will lead to more engagement and connection from the fans. And the fact that we're that no matter what, when sports live when when live sports resumes, it does not appear that fans will be allowed. So will that increased access and that increased you, you're you're there, you're hearing this trash talk or 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 coaching tips, will that become all the more important to draw fans in? In my view, one hundred percent yes, Rebecca. I think that. This is all a battle for time and money. So I have a choice as, as a fan. I could spend my time with Netflix. I could spend my time at Amazon Prime. Or if I find something that's engaging in the sports world, I'm going to spend my time with that content. And one way to draw people in is through facilitating that stronger connection between star and fan. And the digital technologies that we have today provide those innovation opportunities and there's been a, a, a lot of work in the past saying, hmm, you know what, we don't want to disrupt the integrity of the game. Well, the fact is, I think what we're seeing right now is that if you make that decision on a more liberal basis, you can benefit with stronger fan engagement. So Ben, let's talk more about technology. You already talked about this idea of a platform to curate all a fan's uh, interests and needs and create community. How else might the industry leverage technology to, to enhance and create more community among, among its fans? Well, community is so important to sports. Arguably, it's the primary need that it fills, social connection. And if we can't go to games, we've got to create community somehow. And that's where technology comes into play. One of the fascinating developments to monitor, especially in the pandemic, is the Twitch platform, which in my opinion is a great example of the future of interactive viewing. You're able to chat with the rest of the community about the esports action that you're seeing. If you want to clip your own highlights, you can do that. If you want to co-stream and provide your own play-by-play -play commentary, you can do that. So it's fully interactive and it's built around this notion of live gaming content can be a community builder. Now, when we look at the future of sports beyond the esports realm, I could easily imagine that same type of social interaction being applied to a number of different sports events. For instance, we're even seeing Amazon experiment a bit with NFL games on Twitch. We're gonna see more of this. And that's because if we can't congregate at stadiums, we gotta connect somehow. The important point here is that when you participate as a fan, you gotta be rewarded somehow. And from my standpoint, there's got to be some sort of incentive. Now, social currency is one key incentive. You feel part of a group that gives you validation. That's very, very important. But we're also going to see in the future an increase in the role that gambling plays in the fan experience. Now, this is another way that fans participate and get incentivized for that participation. Certainly with the rise of daily fantasy sports leagues from DraftKings and FanDuel, and then with the increased adoption legally of gambling within a number of states in the US and, and in countries around the world, this integration of gambling where you can bet on any moment in any sport is going to be brought to the surface in sports broadcasts and streams Across, across a wide range of events. 
That's obviously a great way to create participation and incentivize that participation. The main thing that I think we need to pay attention to as an industry and that we need to continue to study is what the unintended consequences are. My big concern, of course, is that as fans, especially in this economic contraction that we've had, spend money that they may not have to gamble on sports, that could set off a sea change of challenges that the industry is going to have to deal with. So Ben, it sounds like there are a lot of exciting opportun uh, innovation opportunities for, for teams to, to capitalize on and, and improve on the fan experience, but also a lot of challenges and unintended consequences that they need to be mindful of. The reality is the fan experience is changing. Think about all of the athletes that are using social media. In many respects, the athletes that I'm following are my primary connection point to the sports world right now when games aren't being played. You know, they, they are owning the fan experience. So I, I definitely foresee in the future uh, a continued shift to fans, not only liking teams, that's important, they'll continue to like teams, but I, I, I see this continued shift for fans to become fans of players. And as players move around to different teams, to go with them. This is a, another key trend that I think is only accelerating as we look at how the fan experience will change as a result of COVID. Excellent. Well, thank you so much, Ben, for coming on the show. Thank you, Rebecca. It's a joy. And thank you for tuning in at home. For more on the series of the future of the sports industry, please head to mitsloan.mit.edu.